welcome back to my channel and yes that is my christmas tree i needed some happiness so i put my tree up um welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is alexandria jean i'm an esthetician a youtuber and i have a podcast as well i'll link everything below so if you want to follow me on other platforms i'll have that linked in the description um, and we're still moving into the house. We just got the last of our stuff, so that's why none of this is really organized, and I've got stuff everywhere. So, I am a little shaken today. Um, I was on my way to orientation for my new job, and I got into a car accident. Um, of course, my brand new 2022 Honda Civic, it was backed into. There was a man at uh, the red light, and he ran it and almost hit two cars, and they laid on their horn. And, it's, and they were waving him to go, and instead of going, he decided to put it in reverse. And so I'm laying on my horn, because I can't back up, I have people behind me, and he crunches my headlight. And so, I've only had my car barely two months, so... <sighs> I'm very excited to be in San Antonio, but it has been stressful. And then the week before, I went to the hospital because I had a in bladder infection, so... Okay, so that should be the last of all of the things because everything else is going fantastic. Um, that's why my hair, like I look a hot mess. Um, I did look nice through my hair up after the car wreck because I had to stand outside for an hour waiting for the cops. But that's a whole nother story. We're here. It's Facial Friday. We are going over skincare. So today we are going over oily, oily skin. In the last video, we went over normal. So this week is going to be on oily skin. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this week's video. So light a candle, put on a face mask, grab some tear water. We're diving straight in today. So what defines oily skin and how do we know if we have that skin type? So the characteristics of oily skin are that the skin will have an excess of sebum production, which is oil. So the follicle size is larger and your pores are definitely going to be more noticeable with oily skin. So you are more prone to uh, breakouts and blemishes um, with having oily skin because of the overproduction. There's a lot of oils and it can potentially clog the pores. And you tend, when you have oily skin, you tend to have thicker skin. So for example, like an easy way to tell if you have really thin skin or thick skin is raise your forehead. Like I kind of have thick skin uh, just because I don't have a whole lot of wrinkles, even at my age. Like if I push really hard, you can see a couple. But um, then you have some people that can barely raise their forehead and they have multiple. It's just they have thinner skin. There's nothing wrong with that. It's natural. Everyone has different skin thickness. So the surface of the skin is oily. Um, so in the morning you wake up and you're oily or halfway through the day you have to blot your face because you are so oily. Beneficial ingredients for oily skin are salicylic acid and glycolic acid, sulfur, niacinamide, zinc oxide, tea tree oil, and kale and clay. Well, in the normal video, I really didn't go over the ingredients because they were kind of self-explanatory. Most people knows what non-fat milk and aloe vera is, but with some of these with the um, different acids and the niacinamide, I have a feeling not many people that are not estheticians know what that is. So I'm just gonna go a little bit into detail on each of those. Salicylic and glycolic acid are both chemical exfoliators. So those will help to balance your sebum production or oil production. Also, and they also help to prevent your pores from clogging. So the two acids, glycolic and salicylic, act in different ways. While salicylic acid, which is a BHA, so that's a beta hydroxy acid, that goes deeper into the pores. So glycolic acid will stay more on the surface of the skin. Salicylic is probably the more common option. But so, but using them in conjunction, but not at the same time, that can really bring added benefits to the skin. So, kaolin clay or kaolin, people pronounce it differently. I say kaolin clay. So, kaolin clay can help draw out oils and impurities in the skin, but it's still gentle on the skin. And you definitely want to see this type of product in one of your wash off masks. So, research does show that niacinamide is an amazing ingredient that can also help improve the over production of oil or sebum. Sulfur is an ingredient that helps to dry out blemishes, promotes exfoliation, fights bacteria, and helps to control shine. The anti-inflammatory effect in tea tree oil helps to soothe and relieve painful 
and irritated skin. And it can also help reduce redness and swelling. So you can see how these ingredients, when you have them, multiple of these ingredients in different um, products throughout your skincare regimen. So if your cleanser has, you know, a salicylic acid, you know, and your mask has kaolin clay and, you know, different ingredient, different products have different ingredients, but if you have these, it really helps with inflammation, uh, preventing clogged pores, helps with the oil um, reduction. So the goal for oily skin would be to balance the oil production and to avoid harsh cleansers. Harsh cleansers strip the skin of natural oils. And if you are stripping the oil completely off of your face, like as much as you can, because there are some cleansers that are extremely harsh, what you're doing is removing all of the oil so your body goes into overproduction of oil. So your skin is communicating deeper into the layers and says, hey, we have no oil, let's over start producing more. And so you're really fighting yourself. You're putting, ooh, you're putting this harsh cleanser that's caused is supposed to remove the oils, but you're actually causing an overproduction. And so now you're really ramping up your sebum glands. So let's use not as harsh cleansers and actually treat the skin and the issues and then the oiliness will combat itself. So we also wanna do preventative care. Preventative care would be cleaning and take a, taking care of your skin and also having a skincare routine. So I lost all of my footage. <laughs> so it's okay. I'm gonna re-record. It's not gonna be as good as the first time. Actually, you know what, you know what girl? It is gonna be as good as the first time because I know what I'm talking about, the. <laughs> Okay, so you need a good routine and schedule it into your day just like you would with lunch with a friend. You need to schedule a time in the morning for yourself and a time in the evening. Give yourself 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you can do a faster skincare if you are a busy person. You can probably do it between five and eight minutes. Um, just schedule that time out for yourself to take care of your skin. You really want a skincare routine because if you don't take care of your skin, you're more than likely gonna develop skin conditions. So acne, hyperpigmentation, sun damage. Um, if you don't take care of your skin, you will. You may not see it right away, but within the next couple of years, you're gonna start noticing things. And I can say that as an esthetician, I've noticed there was a period of time last year that I didn't really take care of my skin. And I can definitely tell, and now I'm like fighting it now and having to work through all of those conditions. You should see your esthetician once a month because your cell turnover rate, which is your skin coming from the basal cell layer all the way up to the skin that you actually see is every 28 to 30 days for an average normal adult. So every month you have a brand new set of skin cells that we're treating. So if you see us minimum at least once a month, we're able to push those products in deeper to the deeper layers where your skin regenerates itself in the basal cell layer um, when mitosis happens. Um, and so within the next 28 days, you'll start to notice every 28 days, you're gonna notice a difference in your skin. You're gonna notice that difference and 20% of how your skin results are or are based on your esthetician. But I would say the other 80% is gonna be on you. You have to be consistent. You have to have a routine and you have to take care of yourself. I mean, that's just how it is with anything. Like with dieting, you can't eat a salad for a week and expect yourself to drop 30 pounds. Same with skincare. You can't buy a whole new skincare set, use it one, one and a half weeks and think it doesn't work. You have to give it at least minimum 30 days to 60 days to see results. And just like with weight loss, like I know I've struggled most of my life on and off with weight loss and I see the biggest results when I look back at my before photos. So when you're starting a new skincare regimen and you wanna actually start a skincare regimen, if you don't have one and take care of your skin, take before photos, take up close photos. They're not gonna be fun in the moment, but I guarantee you if you're consistent and you take care of your skin and you look back at your before four photos and look back at your photos where you're at in a month to two months, you will see a difference. Just what is it going to hurt? What you're doing now obviously isn't working or you wouldn't be watching this video. So invest in yourself, go to an esthetician and really just give it your all. Listen to everything they have to say, do what they tell you to do. And then in a month, look at your skin, make sure you take before and after photos. I guarantee that you'll see a difference. And if you don't comment below and, um, We'll, we'll chat about it. So why not just take care of yourself and your skin and see a professional esthetician that has been trained in ingredients, um, chemistry, the skin, and we're even trained down to the way that the electricity flows through the instruments we use. At least I was at the school that I went to. So I'm telling you, 
we pay, I pay 20 grand to go to school. So I, trust me, I learned and read my book and I know, and I'm paying extra on top of that. I just took a $160 course for skincare ingredients so I could learn what these ingredients do and how they affect the skin and how they work within the layers of the skin. As someone that has oily skin, you definitely need to be changing your pillowcase once a week minimum. And I would do your sheets as well because if your skin is oily on your face, you're more than likely gonna have oily skin normally all over, not necessarily, but for the most part, most of the oily skin people I know, they are oilier through their chest and their arms and shoulders um, and they can get back knee. And I know a lot of people sleep in tank tops or they don't sleep in, in anything at all. And so your skin is right on those sheets. Like don't be sleeping and rolling around in that grossness, like at least minimum wash them once a week. I would recommend two, but at least once a week. I could go on and on about oily skin. If you wanna hear more, um, let me know. I can do a part two if you want me to, if you have any questions um, about something that I didn't cover. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Alexandria Jean underscore ST, that's E-S-T-Y um, on Instagram. I'm about, I'm probably going to be getting off Facebook, so I'm not going to give you that. Um, just my podcast, I'll link that below. Um, and that's the places that you'll be able to find me. Give me a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in next week's video. We will be doing dry skin. So you are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. So go out there and make your wildest dreams come true. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.